welcome back to my channel and today is Sunday so we're gonna be doing chicken soup Sunday let's get started <laughs> Before I get started, I want to let you know that this story I've read before is very beautiful and emotional. So if you're a person that cries at tear jerkers a lot, then get a box of tissues. And if you don't cry, that's okay. Like I, when people say, if you don't cry at that, you don't have a heart. I'm like, I hate that because sometimes I do cry during movies, but not all the time. Like... But, yeah. Anyway, if you don't cry, that's fine. If you cried, that's fine. Let's get started with this. So, um, the story is called Words from the Heart. And the quote before it says, The bitterest tears shed over graves are for words left unsaid and deeds left undone. Harriet Beecher Stowe. Most people need to hear those three little words once in a while. They hear them in... Oh, sorry, let me start over. Most people hear those three little words. Most people need to hear those three, three little words. Once in a while, they hear them just in time. I met Connie the day she was admitted to the hospice ward. She was admitted to the hospice ward where I worked as a volunteer. Her husband, Bill, stood ner nervously nearby as she, as she was transferred from the gurney to the hospital bed. Although Connie was in the final stages of her fight against cancer, she was alert and cheerful. We got her settled in. I finished making her name on the hospital on all the hospital supplies so she would be that she would be using then asked if she needed anything. Oh yes, she said, would you please show me how to use the TV? I enjoy the soap so much and don't want to get behind on what's happening. Connie was a romantic. She loved soap operas, romance novels, and movies with a good love story. As we became acquainted, she confided on how frustrating it was to be married 32 years to a man who often called her a silly woman. Oh, I know Pill loves me, she said, but he's never been one to say he loves me or send me cards. She sighed and looked out the window at the trees in the courtyard. I'd give anything if he'd just say, I love you, but that's just not in his nature. Bill visited Connie every day. In the beginning, he sat next to the bed while she watched the soaps. Later, she began sleeping more. He paced up and down the hallway outside her room. Soon, she was, soon when she no longer watched television, had fewer waking moments. I began spending more of my volunteer time with Bill. He talked about having worked as a carpenter and how he liked to go fishing. He and Connie had no children, but they'd been enjoying retirement by traveling until Connie got sick. Bill could not express his feelings about the fact that his wife was dying. One day over cafeteria coffee, I got him on the subject of women and how we needed we need romance in our lives, how we love to get sentimental cards and, and love letters. Do you tell Connie you love her? I asked, knowing his answer. He looked at me as if I was crazy. I don't have to, he said. She knows I do. I'm sure she knows, I said, reaching over and touching his hands, rough carpenter hands that were gripping the cup as if it was the only thing he had to hang on to. But she needs to hear it, Bill. She needs to hear what she's meant to you all these years. Please think about it. We walked back to Connie's room. Bill disappeared inside and I left to visit another patient. Later, I saw Bill sitting by the bed. He was holding Connie's hand as she slept. The date was February 12th. Two days later, I walked down the hospice ward and at noon, there stood Bill leaning up against the wall in the hallway staring at the floor. I already knew from the head of the nurse that Connie had died at 11 a.m. When Bill saw me, he allowed himself to come into my arms for a long hug. His face was wet with tears and he was trembling. Finally, he leaned back against the wall and took a deep breath. I have to say something, he said. I have to say how good I feel about telling her. He stopped to blow his nose. I thought a lot about what you said and this morning, I told her how much I loved her and loved being married to her. You should have seen her smile. I went into the room to say my goodbye, my own goodbye to Connie, and there on the bedside was a large Valentine card from Bill. You know the sentimental kind that says, "To my wonderful wife, I love you, Bobby Lipton." And here's this um, little cartoon. 
It's chicken soup and a guy's right there. And it says, are you absolutely sure, Dr. Plasky, that my mother's advice haven't affected the treatment? So, that's kind of funny. Um, so, before we read about our friend, Bobby Lipman, let's talk about the story. Um, it's, it may be a cliche to, like, value your days. Tomorrow's not promised for everybody. Tell the people you love them. It, it is a cliche. Like, it's said all the time but it's so true like tomorrow isn't promised for everyone like and you can't just assume that people know something you got to use your words you you words can save a life so i'm really grateful for that story so let's read about our friend bobby let's do it Bobby Jensen Lipman is a prolific human interest writer whose work has been, appeared in national and international publications. She hosts a radio program called Bobby's Beat on the Air, which is broadcast locally and in the Midwest. Bobby is involved with a visually impaired and is also very active in hospice work. It also gives her address and phone number, which I will include in the credits at the end of this video so if you want to contact Bobby you can also as I will say for every chicken soup Sunday video you can you can be in this book too if you want well maybe I don't know how it works but you can try um, I'll give the link to the website below and then you can you can um submit your story using the directions online so Stay with me, folks. Choose kindness and keep spinning. <laughs>